So the NVIDIA RTX 5090 specs are starting to be rumored, if you will. Although there are a few things that we know already. It's gonna be faster than the 4090, right? Maybe the same price, maybe more expensive, a little bit tough to tell. But let's take a look at what some of these specs are. And one big thing we can say right off the bat, um, did you know like the 4090 is actually banned in, in China from going in because it's so powerful um, in terms of using it for AI and machine learning, a lot of people in China are actually taking 4090s because they can't get like the NVIDIA data center GPUs. That's why NVIDIA even released the 4090D, you know, the year of the dragon edition. That's a little bit, you know, underpowered compared to the 4090. That way they can sort of go in under the ban of the other chips that are, you know, meant for AI and things like that. So that actually is pretty important because NVIDIA is not going to be able to make a 5090 that's going to be, you know, acceptable under this same ban as well. That means that they're probably going to release the 5080 first, which is going to have to come in right under that ban. So we can imagine it's going to be close in performance to the 4090, maybe even like the 4090D or something like that. So the real star of the show, however, will be the 5090. Let's take a look at some of these specs, and they're just rumors at this point, but let's see what they may potentially mean. And now let's hear a word from our sponsor, vip-cdkdeals.com, a Windows Pro CD key. Add to cart, you put in code CC20. This will also work on Windows 11. You wanna go into your settings in Windows, change and adjust your CD key, click activate, and now let's go back to the video. All right, so the specs for the you know potential 5090 so let's see here the first thing the streaming multiprocessors we're going to go from 128 to 192 on the 5090 now of course the gpu is made up of various parts you have the vram you have you know various various components that all affect overall performance in different areas we've heard that potentially the 5090 may be like 50 to 70 percent faster than something like the 4090 and these numbers kind of you know tell a story where it may end up being like that so that's certainly a pretty significant difference 128 to 192 that is going to be one powerful gpu and then obviously we go and take a look at cuda cores that's another big number the 4090 already had a lot of cuda cores 16,000. 384 it's going to go all the way up to 24,576 like this gpu if this is true is going to be a monster not just for gaming but for the machine learning content creation you know 3d graphic stuff it's going to be in demand from literally every single high-end sector of the market not just gaming so that's something that you know maybe may not be the best news for those that want to get it at a decent price early on and then ray tracing cores 128 to 192 similarly to the streaming multiprocessors that's also going to be very very interesting ray tracing and path tracing like it or not man i actually like it i think it's one of the you know coolest technologies to sort of emerge you know during the last few years it makes games look incredible all of the new you know high-tech games cyberpunk you know alan wake 2 all those games really heavily took advantage of lighting and shadow effects with path tracing ray tracing so to see a G GPU that can actually handle even more of those goodies going to be very very exciting after all when you get a 5090 you want it to perform the best period in every single facet including the leading edge most gamers may not want to turn on ray tracing but if you want to be right at the forefront of graphics technology that's certainly something that you want to have and then going down to tensor cores, 512 to 768, that's another pretty significant uh, uh, boost there. That's a pretty big difference. So every single number is definitely going up by a pretty wide margin. And obviously that's gonna hugely affect the GPU performance. Even the boost clock is going from around 2.5 gigahertz to around 2.9. So we're gonna have higher clocks as well everything about this gpu is going to be absolutely screaming l2 cache 72 megabytes to 128 megabytes now that's a pretty sizable difference as well and then a huge one memory bandwidth which is actually going to be gddr7 so very fast vram it's going to go from around 1008 to 1532 that's 
quite significant. That means that for AI and data centers, this GPU is going to be like ridiculously fast. Now, for gaming, obviously memory speed does matter. Also, you get more performance when you're pumping up your ray tracing and textures at high resolutions. But there's no doubt that this GPU also looks like it's geared to be, you know, a content creation slash like data center GPU. It really does look like one of the mini AI GPUs, one of those big $30,000 GPUs. Very interesting. Every single thing, tensor cores, CUDA cores, everything is getting a pretty significant upgrade. So I wouldn't be surprised if this GPU does perform 50 to 70% better than the existing 4090. That means, you know, ray tracing is going to be better. Um, you know, DLSS 3 with frame generation, if you even actually need it, with the power that this GPU has, I think it might be able to handle most things natively. New games come out and people may start going to 8K resolutions, then obviously you're going to need DLSS 3. But maybe enough with the positives about this GPU. We don't want to get our, ahead of ourselves being a little bit too excited. What are some negatives about this GPU? Well, the first negative, this GPU seems to be so good, AMD might be quitting GPUs in general. I'm just kidding. That's not a, that's a complete, even though that is true. AMD has been a little sketchy on the high end, but hopefully they continue to compete. But anyway, what are some real negatives about the RTX 5090? Well, from the specs, like I've been hinting at, this GPU is going to be in demand from absolutely, you know, every single sector of the different markets, gaming, content creation, AI. So it may be something difficult to get. The 4090 was difficult to get. It sold out and then scalpers got their hands on it. Prices went up. So that means we could see a bigger gap between the 5090 and a 5080 than we've ever seen before. Literally, the 5080 may end up being the high-end GPU that most people can get first because of price you know if it's 999 and secondly just you know availability even the 4090 was hard to get for months and it's only been recently that it started showing up a little bit more on star store shelves so definitely the 5090 is going to be hard to get that's going to pump up the price you know but if you want like the bleeding edge of technology unfortunately you're going to have to pay for it so that's going to be one of the negatives with this gpu Secondly, now, who knows exactly how much you really need a 5090? Like, it's definitely going to be overkill for, like, 1440p. Your CPU is going to be heavily taxed. Imagine having CPU bottlenecks even at 4K with a 4090. That happened a lot. So... With a 5090, with these type of specs, we can only expect that the current CPUs are not going to be able to keep up with it. So your existing hardware is definitely going to you know, need to be upgraded to whatever comes out next. Even the fastest stuff today is not going to handle it, like the fastest Intel chips or AMD Ryzen chips. So we're going to need new chips in order to take advantage of this GPU. Not to mention, we probably have to go up in resolution to take advantage of this GPU because it's going to start being overkill for 4 Okay, pretty soon, especially with the LSS and things like that. Now, who knows how the rest of the lineup is going to be? I think that's where most gamers are going to focus just because of the pricing and because of the availability. Remember, most likely the 5080 will come out first and then the 5090 probably a few weeks later. Um, this may be at the end of this year, but you know, who knows? Nvidia may switch around schedules and change things like that. But at least the specs look highly impressive. I mean, really, the most negative thing you can say about it is probably, you know, the high price that's already expected and obviously the problems with availability. But as a gaming product, it's going to be the best we've ever seen. That's pretty much a given, judging from the specs that eventually may come out. And then we'll have to see if it fixes some issues that the 4090 had, specifically with the power connector. Remember all of those melting GPUs? You can assume NVIDIA probably is looking at that very closely and making sure sure that the new RTX 50 series has none of those issues because after all 5090 is probably going to be just as power hungry if not more than the RTX 4090 was maybe from 450 watts all the way up to 600 watts which is the limit of that 12 very high power cable so we'll see how far they can take it but certainly it's pretty exciting you're just going to have to expect to pay a lot of money for it and it's going to be tough to get those are the negatives that I see at this point Hopefully, AMD has something that at least gets close to the 5080 or can at least keep NVIDIA honest with a competition because it'd be a shame to watch them drop out. But 
obviously with specs like these and you know with ray tracing with the lead in ai nvidia certainly has the upper hand but hopefully and you know amd stays in it and at least gives us something to keep the prices a little bit more you know competitive and obviously the second hand market for rtx 4000 is going to go down so you'll probably see 4090s get cheaper and 4080s you know when these new gpus come out so those are more than good enough for like 99 percent of gamers so that's going to be a huge benefit to these new more expensive gpus coming out as well it's likely going to be by the end of this year sometime all right guys so let me know what you think down below what do you think of this new 1590 remember to subscribe and i'll see you guys on the next video